scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Where are your loved ones? My sister is here. Your sister is here. What is she doing? She's volunteering. No, there is a spirit of joblessness in your family that God wants to break now. Where is she come? Are you working, my dear? You are doing a volunteer work. This is what I'm saying. Volunteer work where? Faith. Faith and life. Where is faith and hospital. Is there something like that? You see, sorry we take our time to say things like this so that you don't join everybody and think everybody is a wizard. There are people who love God. Not everybody is some person playing games around, no. Madam, lift your hands just where you are. Kai, this woman. I see a lot of oppression in your life, but I stretch my hands from here, and in the name of Jesus, I bring it to an end now. By the power of the Holy Spirit, it comes to an end supernaturally. Don't worry, you will sit down shortly. You will sit down shortly. There's a reason why I ask you to stand. Um, the lady. Sorry, I'm giving you work. Hold your hands, both of you. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare that the plague of barrenness ends right now over your life by the anointing of the Spirit. Oh, they are your children. They are your children. Biological children. Can, can you see the connection now? Can you see the connection now? In the name of Jesus, we declare that this family is free. These are the kinds of conferences that you will never forget. God bless you. Please, why are they here? No, 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 please. You see, I will pray for everybody. I've not even started ministry. This one, I'm just doing what God has asked me to do. So we will pray generally for the issue of barrenness. Eh? It's not. It, it doesn't just mean that. Um, why is this our little one here? This is my adopted daughter. Your adopted daughter. Yes, my husband is in the crowd. Okay, why are you here? You prayed for me to. After eight years of a marriage, no. You children. adopted her while waiting. Yes. May God bless you. You are a kind woman. You are proven to God that you are worthy of a child. Amen. What's your name, sir? Okay, you are not here for the washers. In the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands and I declare, by the power of the Holy Spirit, that plague of joblessness. My dear, look at me. You are the one from the, the who is Naya? That I spoke about, and your sister, in the name of Jesus. Do you know really what, what I'm praying for you for? In the name of Jesus, I declare, if God be God, go and prepare for your jobs. Jobs with honor and jobs with grace. In the name of Jesus Christ, jobs with honor and jobs with grace. And for those of you here, in the name of Jesus, I pray for you. I can't remember why you came out here, but I declare in the name of Jesus Christ. By the power of the Holy Spirit, your requests are turned to your testimonies. In the name of Jesus Christ. One more issue and then we are seated. Who is Dogara? 
Dogara, Dogara, Dogara. I'm hearing the name Dogara. Just help us under the anointing, please. Who is Dogara? I'm hearing a name Dogara. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Dogara. Dogara. When you find such a person, let me talk to them. We'll be seated shortly. Dogara. Let me minister to one more person that I've seen in the spirit. Someone will begin to laugh in the spirit. And the Lord is speaking to that person that he's taking away that person I'm seeing is on this row and is at the back. On this row and at the back. On this row and at the back. Jesus be glorified. Let's let this thing not be strange. You see, the Bible says the natural man does not understand the things of the spirit. Because he says they are spiritually discerned. This is not some chaos and this is not some disorderliness and disarray. No, it is the character of the operation of the spirit. Where people who are organized and orderly. But there are times that when the Lord comes, you allow him to be Lord. It may not make sense till you hear their testimonies. I've seen a lot of pain and sorrow in this family. And I declare the name of Jesus. I stretch my hands to you, dear one, that captivity comes to an end over your family. Captivity comes to an end in the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you, John. Thank you. Please be seated, everyone. Amen. God bless you. Just keep on there. By the way, we didn't greet. Good evening, everybody. Just turn to your neighbor left and right and say good evening. Hallelujah. This is our final session together. And um, it's my joy to have been here, Pastor. Thank you. It's always a privilege and an honor to be used by God. And like I said, I am... I am absolutely honored um, because I'm having to do this in my own state and it truly is a blessing for me. Thank you. Praise the Lord. I want to encourage everyone sincerely, please do try to get the tapes for yesterday and this morning. This is not about, this is not the greatest gift you can give someone this weekend, as far as I'm concerned, is to support someone with this. That you take the tape and tell the person, please listen. Don't just collect it and keep it. Because the truths that come have in them the ability to set men free. Hallelujah. Tonight's teaching will be very brief. And then we'll be praying for the sick and trusting God. But I want you to be very sensitive in the spirit. Inside, outside, there's so many people scattered all around this auditorium and outside. And many following from different parts of the world. And um, I want us to lend our destinies, our attention. And whilst I speak, when the power of God comes upon anybody, just guide them quietly. Just help them so they don't injure themselves. And you. Tonight's teaching is one of the eight mysteries that the Spirit of the Lord gave me. I may not have time to share with you my spiritual journey and my walk with the Lord 
a number of you have read and heard about my encounters with the Lord and every true apostolic ministry is based on the mysteries committed by God to a generation not just to an individual not just to a church and one of the mysteries that God committed remember we taught that the mysteries of the kingdom are the secrets by which we walk practically in dominion the teaching if understood tonight will totally not just heal and deliver but will bring serious transformation not only to this territory not only to this state but even across the neighboring regions and i pray that within the few minutes we have to share the truths that the spirit of god will breathe upon this message in the name of jesus tonight i'm teaching on the mystery of the body of Christ the bride of Christ tonight's teaching will bring spiritual stability to every believer and will grant us access to be able to experience the fullness of the life that is resident in the Christ life here is not very accurate because everybody has eternal life when you die here you don't stop living you only translate to another dimension but living continues are we together the rich man and Lazarus remember and they were separated but both alive and could communicate so it says that God has given us Zoe now eternal life and that the life is in his son and whosoever has the son hath that life the second encounter is the encounter with the person and the office of the Holy Spirit. It is true that the Holy Spirit engenders the new birth experience. Please listen. But it, he has a separate office. Are we together now? John chapter 16, Jesus was teaching the, the disciples and he says, When he, the spirit of truth, is come. 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 I command you to let that lady go now. I declare, let her go now. Let her go now. Don't mind me. Let me just do my mad thing. Let her go now. I speak to this spirit that I see. Release that dear sister now. And release her family in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. That person is here, and when the power of God comes upon that person, is is a serious emancipation God is bringing to his sister and her family now. In the name of Jesus, the Lord just interrupted me. I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit, let that person be free now. In the name of Jesus Christ. So let's continue. The third encounter is the encounter with the Word of God. The thoughts, the logos of God. And then the last encounter is what I want to teach now. Encounter with the body of Christ. Many believers have not known that the body of Christ as an entity needs to be encountered there. There are dimensions. Am I doing anything wrong? Okay. There are dimensions of spiritual possibility. And there is a huge price to pay if you do not understand the body of Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, please. We are Bible students, so let's get to the word. We'll read from verse 27. We'll read in context. Apostle Paul is teaching the church in Corinth. And he's, he was teaching them on what we call the Holy Communion. Are we together now? And he begins to borrow a, an expression that we'll be using tonight. He's teaching them. This was at a point where the people were handling the communion carelessly, Pastor. And some of them would take from the wine and get drunk. There was a lot of lawlessness. So Paul was bringing order to the church. Are we together? Verse 27. 
So he's speaking about the body of Christ and the cup. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. Next verse, please. But let a man examine himself and so let him eat that bread and drink of that cup. 29. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning. Please keep verse 29, just keep it up there. Not discerning. So what is the sin here? Not discerning. So he's not just talking about communion like wafas and zobo. No. Those are just emblems. They are representations of a higher reality that the, the Christ has a body and that the body must be discerned. Are we together now? So that there is a crime a believer can commit and it will short circuit his experiencing the fullness of Christ. And this is what he calls it, not discerning the Lord's body. What is the consequence? Verse 30. Read with me if you are a Christian. For this cause, stop. What cause? The cause of not discerning the body. What has happened to many? Number one, many are weak. Number two, many are sickly among you. Number three, many sleep. The word sleep there is die. When was the last time you saw an obituary and they told you the reason why this man died was because he did not discern the Lord's body? This is a very powerful teaching that you can encounter Christ and yet not encounter his body and this is the resultant effect. Your life will be short-circuited that the body of Christ as an entity must also be encountered. Are we together now? This is very powerful. Very powerful. Just follow me. And while you are following me, pray for grace. So that I'll be able to just touch on this. Let me start by teaching something. Please prepare two or three of you. I will make use of you shortly. There is a bias that happens to a believer on account of the dealings of God with such a believer. Now I'm ready to have two or three people. Any gentlemen, please. Just two or three of you. Just come stand, space yourself. God bless you. Thank you. Ah, you're allowing our uncle to come. Please, sir, you, you may go back, please. You really want to come? I'm not sure. Thank you for your humility. God bless you. Please just stand, everyone. Watch this. Now, when you begin your spiritual journey, please, everyone, pay attention. When you begin your spiritual journey, everybody starts from the same pace born again, prayer, church, etc, etc. Are we together? But whilst you progress in your dealings with God, based on the predeterminate counsel of God and your call, your office, and your dimension, the Spirit of God begins to diverge everybody to different realms of operation. Are you getting what I'm saying now? And there is a side effect to that act. That's what I want to start teaching. That means that if this man has been destined by God to, to work in a prophetic ministry. For instance, notice that the nature and the character of the dealings of the Spirit with this man may not be the same as this man. They all start from the same group or the same fellowship, yet you will begin to notice an unusual grace for prayer and fasting. Above the average, he may not know why, and the colleagues may think he's just being overzealous. But it is, it is the separations of the spirit so that you will begin to have the personalized dealings of the spirit. Please listen. Now, because of the character of that dealing, when he has been isolated for a season, the curriculum of his dealing with the spirit will not capture many things that his life needs. For instance, the spirit of God will not teach this man at that point of, of tutelage on excellence on finances. He may buy a book on finances and the Spirit of God will say, drop it. Read a book on prayer. Watch this. This guy is being trained to be a prophet to the nations. But there is a side effect. Because he needs to have grace for finances. He needs leadership. He needs administration. Yet, God will on purpose for that time 
negates him from studying those things. He will keep him at the core of what will represent the epicenter of his ministry. Now, when this guy is done with God in that training, the lapse and the lopsidedness in his not having other dimensions will create a faulty ministry if he goes that way. Because the only part he would teach is the part that was captured in his dealings. So chances are that this man will have a church and in his church he would trivialize excellence. He would trivialize administration. The only thing that will happen in his church is an extension of what happened in his secret place. Listen, please. You have to understand what I'm teaching you. Now, this guy, his destiny is to be a kingdom leader and an administration, uh, an, an administrator. Are we together? The character of his dealings, his personalized dealings with God, may not capture too much of prayer and fasting and warfare and all of this. This guy will be encouraged to go to John C. Maxwell's Leadership Institute. Are we together now? And he, he will be very logical and academic in his approach. Follow me now. At the end of it, this man will be able to raise CEOs in his church. They will be exceptionally brilliant people, intellectuals, but the deficiency of this dimension of dealing will reflect in that church. You will find out that people are doing well, getting jobs, becoming captains of industry, but dying of sickness, prayerlessness, carnal, backsliders, the dealing of God was supposed to leave you needing the body. Hold on. We are building something. So this guy, the nature of his dealing can make him believe all that God taught him is all there is to be learned. Are you seeing that now? And so everybody he mentors or teaches will come from a standpoint of that limitation. Not encountering the body will cause this man to destroy so many people. Because many people will be poor and broke. Families will break up. Divorce rates will be high under his leadership. And this one here is going to be obituary upon obituary. Darkness will move in and out of the church unhindered. They will participate in the service. The only evidence of God in that church will be prosperity. Now watch this. And these are their uncle here. Now God takes him to a dimension where the grace of a teacher is what his destiny is going to be holding and manifesting. Because of that, he will encounter the spirit of revelation in an unusual way. This man can lock himself for one week, not praying, no, just studying. Any book at all, he will have a library that is taller than him. Now, listen, he may not even know what is sponsoring that passion. Now, if this man stands from where he is and mentors his children in the gospel, do you know what is going to happen? If he's not careful, he will teach them to trivialize prayer because that was not an emphasis in his training. And he will teach them to, to de-emphasize administration. Everybody say the body of Christ. Revelations 21. Hmm. I will show you what the bride of Christ looks like. Because Christ has a bride. The name of his bride is his body, the church. Revelations chapter 21. We'll read from verse 9. Are we there? And there came unto me, please look up, one of the seven angels which had seven vials full of the seven last plagues and talked with me saying, let's read together now, come hither, and I will show you the bride, the lamb's wife. So we're about to see the wife of the lamb now. Ready? Next verse. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me that great city. So the bride is a city. The bride is a city. The holy Jerusalem descending out of heaven from God. Uh -huh. Having the glory of God and her light was like unto a stone most precious. Look at the description of that bride. Even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. Read on, please. And had a wall, this and that and that, having the 12 tribes of Israel. Let's go to 13. 
On the east, three gates. On the north, three gates. On the south, three gates. On the west, three gates. Uh huh. And the wall of the city had 12 foundations, and in them the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. 15. And he that talked with me had a golden reed to measure the city, and the gates thereof, and the walls thereof. 16. Now read with me if you are a Christian. Ready? This is still the Lamb's wife. He says, and the city lieth. The word four square means balance. The bride is balanced. And he says, and the length is as large as the breadth. And he measured the city with a reed. 12,000 furlongs. Listen. And the length and the breadth and the height of it are no exaggeration, no imbalance. That's the lamb's wife. That the dimensions of the lamb's wife, every dimension was measured perfectly. Listen. Listen. Truth can kill. It's not only a lie that kills. When truth is exaggerated beyond the boundaries of its usefulness, it can still kill. Satan does not only use a lie to kill, he can use truth to kill. Imbalance is more dangerous than error. Because it will cause you to, to exaggerate a thing and a truth beyond the proportions of his relevance as a portion by God. There is nothing wrong with prosperity and teaching about prosperity. But when it is exaggerated beyond the boundaries of its usefulness, it will now destroy the hearers. There is nothing wrong about the knowledge of the operation of demons and deliverance. But when it is exaggerated beyond its boundary, it will lead men to bondage again and again. There is nothing wrong with the teaching ministry. But when it is exaggerated, men will pride themselves in education more than encounter. There is nothing wrong in the ministry of prayer. All of these things have their jurisdiction in the building of that city. If you're with me, say amen. amen. Encounter with the body of Christ. So Apostle Paul teaches us that there is an error in the body. And that that error in the body, if not corrected, will destroy the potential of many believers. Now I'm using only these three people. Uh, but it can be more. So let's call this three the body of Christ. Everybody say the body of Christ. Notice, notice that the body of Christ is not an individual. It's not a ministry. It is when they come together that they form the body of Christ. That means that the best a man can be is an effective part an effective member that no man has what it takes to represent the entire scope of all that Christ is. No matter how anointed any man or any church is, it is not given to an individual man or ministry to single-handedly present the entire picture of the Christ. It is not in God's economy. No single person can do that. When Jesus took the bread, Pastor, he broke it into different dimensions. Remember the bread is him. And he broke himself into different dimensions and shared it among the apostles. Twelve representing his government. No individual can carry all the bread alone. It is when they come together that they will form the complete bread. So everybody takes a piece of that bread. But the problem is when your dimension now becomes a proposition that that is all that God is, it becomes dangerous. That means, watch me this, that means there are people today who should not die if they understood certain ministries. But because they were taught and mentored that those dimensions are not necessary for this cause, many are sick. There are many poor people today who love God and they are well-meaning and there are graces in the body that should solve their financial problems. But they have been mentored to trivialize that dimension that it is less spiritual than prayer and fasting. So they are fasting giants and great apostles and prophets, but they begin to manipulate people because the reality of economic hardship must be solved. For this cause, our popular saying is Hakanea Lashiria. 
Look at what the Lord just did to these people now. You know, I told you something that when your pain becomes indefinite, you stand a chance of creating a theology around that pain to explain that God can no longer move in that dimension. This is what has happened to the body of Christ. Everybody who wants to prosper will usually try it quietly and fail many times quietly. And out of that pain, like putting your hand in fire, just bring it out quietly and say, God does not prosper. Anything that all is prosperity, no, 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 no. We don't throw the baby and the bathwater together. Please understand this. Revelations chapter 1. Thank you, Jesus. You are opening our eyes. This is the revelation that changed my life and transformed me. Revelation chapter 1 from verse 9. We are reading down to 13. Please everyone look up. I, John, this is Apostle John now, in the Isle of Patmos, who was your brother and companion in tribulation and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was in the Isle that is called Patmos for the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. Read on, please. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and I heard behind me, so John was caught up to the realm of the spirit. I heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet. Uh-huh. Saying, I am Alpha, Omega, the first, last, what thou seest, write in a book and send it to the seven churches. And he lists all of them. Next verse 12. I turn to see. Now watch this. Please come together, sirs. Can we just come together? Let me dramatize what you are reading now. John is hearing a voice speak to him. Are we together? John turns to see that voice. And then when John turned, he didn't see a man. He saw seven lampstands. Are we together now? And then when he, and you know that that lampstand there stands for the complete church. So when God spoke and John turned, he didn't see God, but he saw the church. When he kept looking at the church in the midst of the lampstands, verse 13, in the midst of the seven lampstands, what did he see? One like unto the Son of Man. Let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, no matter how bad the church is, Christ is still in the midst of the lampstands. There may be imperfections, I agree. There may be exaggerations, I agree. There may be childishness and carnality, I agree. There may be manifestations of flesh and limitation, I agree. But were you not taught that husbands love their wives? A, a, a man was designed to love his wife unto death. If your wife gets injured, do you run away? Please talk to me. It's a covenant for life. In the midst of the church, Christ is there. Are we together now? In the midst of the exaggeration, the man is a true man of God. He just likes money. May God help him. But just because he likes money, may not necessarily mean he's evil and wrong. If you throw the baby and the bad water, you will miss out on that grace. Please listen. Elijah was a temperous man, yet he was a prophet. If you walk with Elijah, you will hate him. You know, many times we love these people because we are not in their generation. Would you like a man that enters a, a church to flog people? That's your Jesus, the one you shout all the time and say, I love you. If you were in your church, you would never invite him for any conference. Now, please follow me. The greatest of every man is a man. There is this treasure the Bible says. And it tells you the vessel is earthen. Please don't get me wrong. I'm not justifying carelessness and some of this foolishness all around. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just helping you know that an encounter with the body of Christ will perfect your walk in the spirit. There are many people today who love God with all their heart and while they are praying, 
their pastors may have told them, if you see any material from maybe Papa Kumui, don't go and meet all those deeper like people. And the grace for holiness, genuine holiness is what he needs. But there is a provision for that grace in the body. But because of the bias that has come from a ministry that may not see the necessity for that dimension, that young man will die in sin and immorality and not be able to bail himself out. Whereas subscribing to that grace can take that thing once and for all. Listen, listen to me. The fact that a dimension is not present in your life does not mean it is not in the body. It may not be in your church, but it's in the body. Listen, so every time you pray and ask God to help you, he will refer you to you will be surprised when he says all things are possible. It is because he has vested his feelings in the body. Not all in your church, but in the body. Lord, why is my life delayed? And God says the answer is in the body. But then you have taught yourself that it is only my curriculum that represents all of God. Listen. Even encounter with Jesus is no substitute for the need for the body. Remember Saul. Saul encountered Jesus on his way to Damascus. Are we Bible students? When Jesus had an encounter with him, he still referred him back to the body to continue the training. He said, go to the house of Judah. Stay there. I will send a man to continue. Why do you need a man when you have met Jesus? For this cause, Many pastors who would have been powerful men of God for this cause. Many are weak. Many children today who would have gotten jobs years ago with one prophetic word. Everything, every tragedy would have gone away. So we have Pentecostals here insulting Orthodox pastors and looking at them and saying, you are not filled with the Holy Spirit, you don't understand anything, you are just teaching boring theology. But do you know, I grew up from that kind of background and I'm grateful because it's one of the systems that has created balance in my life today. Many young people who just encounter the Holy Ghost have anointing but no character. Listen, listen. They may not have helped in the dimension of the spirit and all of this, but it is in the Orthodox Church I've learned that someone can die and in one hour people are coming to rally around and greet. Many Pentecostals, when someone dies, they know we don't believe in death. Find your way and go. Go and bury them in your village church somewhere. The grace for love and hospitality may not be in your church, but it is in the body. The pastor may not be able to teach all the revelations you know, but he has character. He can teach love. He can teach fatherhood. Listen very carefully to what I'm telling you. Our refusal, there are people in just here who anybody who is not praying in tongues and not working miracles and signs and wonders and prophesying, it is believed that they are not serious Christians, they are wasting their time. And we continue to insult the fathers of faith in the land and insult everybody and especially some of us young people who are just starting with little grace here and there, one Greek and Hebrew word. Now please, I love you. I'm teaching the body. Listen very carefully. Sit down, sit down, sit down. No, this is not tell them. Sit down and let the Spirit of God talk to everyone. Pastor provided the platform for the body to listen. Let me tell you, the proof that it is God that is building you is humility and love will grow too. The moment you are growing in revelation and it comes with pride, you are altering the training. Are we together? I have the privilege of meeting so many people and sometimes I meet, my parents are here, you can see my parents, my auntie, they are all here listening to me. Now just because I'm anointed, just because I'm a man of God, are we together, should not get to me to dishonor my people and turn to be a fool. If I see my mother carrying something today, I will collect it and hold it on my head. There are people who are not preachers, but a woman has 10 children and all of them are responsible. Don't you know it's a grace? 
you are struggling with one child who is giving you high blood pressure and there is a woman who she, she was roasting corn and with that corn she trained 10 children there is a grace that man of God if you can humble and receive that grace that one child will be fixed at once for this cause many are weak for this cause many are sick for this cause many do sleep if Jesus didn't resurrect Lazarus, he would have concluded. The fact that he resurrected Lazarus meant it was not the time for him to go. Now, I don't mean to get you emotional, but do you know how many people today who have gone who should not go? Do you know how many people whose situations could be solved in moments? Do you know how many people in financial squalor today who could have tapped into the supply provided in the body? Do you know how many prayerless lives would have tapped into the grace that is able to solve them. I came tonight to teach you a dimension, church in Jesus. Nobody thrives being an individual. The system of the body is the system that prevails over darkness. Listen, unity is not uniformity. If you are doing the same thing, everybody is a sign of imbalance. Unity is that you are coordinated by the same objective. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. So the Pentecostals are insulting the Orthodox. The Orthodox are there with their own revenge mission. Everybody is finding a platform to lash out on one another. And God is watching with shock and surprise. And saying, what is going on? Both of them are wrong. This is what is terrible. Both of them are wrong. And you know... No matter how you look at it, somebody from any dimension has a result. So because of the presence of an obvious result, you may think that their advocacy to detach themselves from the body is a healthy thing. Pick a coal from a collection of coal in fire. Just pick it with a tongue and drop it and leave it. Don't off it. Just leave it there. What begins to happen? It goes down. The strength of the church is in her unity. This is why God gave unto some apostles, listen carefully, and prophets and pastors, evangelists, for the equipping of the saints. Until we all together come into the unity of faith. Are you listening to what I'm saying now? In a few minutes, I'm going to be praying for the sick. And now you will see people who came sick and the power of God will touch them just because they came. But someone, for instance, just an example, might say, oh, House on the Rock is not my church. But that's where God has put an anointing to set you free. If you have the open-heartedness, I will tell you, I will answer your question in your heart. Because for many people, our claim of running away from the body is that we do not want to be corrupted. That is the fear. I don't want a false prophet or a false apostle or a false teacher. I don't want a boring orthodox teacher who is just teaching me jargons and stories. And everybody has their justifications. Let me tell you this. I don't have the time, but uh, I wish I had the time. We need to pray. But in Judges chapter 14, please give it to us. The, the fear of associating with the body is hidden in a riddle that Samson gave. Judges chapter 14. We'll start from verse 12. Samson gave a riddle and that riddle contains a secret that explains the reason why most of us are not comfortable to tap from the vast supplies deposited in the body. Let's see the riddle. And Samson said unto them, I will now put forth a riddle unto you. If thou can certainly declare it me within seven days of the feast and find it out, then I will give you 30 sheets and 30 change of garment. 13. But if you cannot, then this and that and that. Let's look at the riddle, verse 14. And he said, Please follow me, Joss. Out of the eater came forth meat, and out of the strong came forth sweetness. Explain. This is Samson asking the city of Joss. There is a riddle here that we want to work on now. Do you know what led to this riddle? Remember that Samson killed a lion. Is that true? He killed a lion and left it down. 
And then he came back after seven days and noticed something strange. That bees left the trees around and made honey in the carcass of the lion. Bees should not make honey in a carcass. There are trees. A carcass is smelly. So Samson reached out and got the honey to the carcass. And this is the riddle. That means if you can endure the smell, there is still honey in the carcass. It is true that it is a carcass. It is true that the man of God may have temper, but God refused to remove the anointing on him. He's still there. It's true that Elijah is an angry man. It's true that Moses can be angry, but he still God's anointed. The key is to have the fortitude and the balance. You know, you've seen me preach in almost every church you can think about. I mean, I've mentioned almost any church pastor and God has granted me access. You know why? Because of this one revelation. There are churches, I have my personal convictions as a person. And the people I mentor and train, I guide them along the convictions that God has given me. But I have sustained the flexibility to be tolerant and open with the body. That becomes the key to reception. You can't go to every church and want your church to be there. No, you will see things here and there. I've gone to churches where they are extremely conservative. You don't even play a keyboard while the sound is on. Keep quiet. There are churches you don't even move around. Are we together now? You stand in one place and finish it there. And you must sustain the flexibility. Listen to me. Listen to me. This is a message for men of God and a message for the city. Can you endure the smell of the carcass? Because you are hungry and in need of honey. Unfortunately, the honey is in the carcass. Your pastor may insult you every time as a worker and you are saying you are a man of God and yet you are insulting me. You will go to hell and you want to leave and God says stay there. And then one day he looks at you and the spirit of God is upon him and he speaks over your life. You have gotten the reward of that grace. How do you think Elisha endured Elijah? The Bible called him the man that poured water. I, I know why the sons of the prophet were angry. That guy must have been harassing them and insulting them. They say, he's going to hell. Let him go to heaven. Let's rest. This wicked lecturer. He would turn and insult Elisha. Elisha said, no problem. I know what I'm looking for. You are an angry man, but you are an anointed angry man. May God help your anger, but I will pursue the anointing. Listen. Listen. There is nothing of value that is cheap. Are we together? So there are times that you will go online and God will show you and take you to a message. And the moment you see the name of the preacher, you remember what your pastor told you. That anybody who is not him is not God. You remember what your I'm not insulting any man of God. Please, please, I'm speaking to the body. It's a correction. It's an adjustment. If I tell my people today that I am the only one that is the ultimate custodian of the mysteries of the kingdom and that no other person in the body is worth listening to and I even teach, for instance, that no matter what it is, there is nothing out there that is different from what I have. I'm an arrogant liar. I must have the humility to admit that as effective as I am, the body, my limitations that came with my training, when God was building me, he didn't teach me on wealth. He didn't teach me on administration. That is not captured in an apostolic ministry. You will have to tap into the supply of the graces in the body that were designed to remedy that. When you see a man as though he's complete and flawless, He's standing on the strength of his alignment to the body. That's what makes him, although an individual, he functions from a standpoint of quintessence, perfection. So you look at him and he's sound in administration. He's sound in leadership. He's sound in teaching. He's sound in the gifts of the spirit. And you are wondering, it looks like God gave him everything. No. 
God gave him his training, his humility and alignment supplied for the labs. In 2004, I came into this city from Zaria because Reinhard Bonke was having a crusade. Listen carefully. I had seen that grace upon his life and I desired that dimension. Remember, I'm a man of God too. You were about to pray. You will soon learn that you don't receive from a colleague. In the realm of the spirit, there must be a spiritual potential difference. If you are not willing to submit to that understanding and that, you cannot receive from a colleague. We are all pastors. We are all prophets. We are all this. There is ranking in the spirit. This is, listen, listen. This is not an insult. We are equal in Christ. We are not equal in the distribution of graces. Our sacrifices alongside the predeterminate counsel of God has separated us into spiritual leaders. Even among the stars, he says, one different from another in glory. I'll be stupid today to see Benny Hinn and say, you are healing, I'm healing. You are teaching, I'm teaching. How are you? We are colleagues. It's a mistake. It's a big mistake. Elijah said, if you can see me, was he not looking at him? If you discern what I represent, that I'm not just a young man you have been following after. So you look at your pastor, Reverend Akila. Some of you knew him before he started. Some of you knew his wife before she started. And to a number of us, he is just that great friend who is now in ministry. Is the reason why strangers keep receiving and going. That's why many members don't receive from their pastors. It looks like the miracles are stage managed because that familiarity, the refusal. Please, I'm not teaching human worship. I know there are men of God who have exaggerated and oppressed people out of insecurity. I'm teaching you a balanced understanding that there is ranking in the spirit. The pride of our generation has destroyed us a lot. Hallelujah. Jesus entered a certain city and he could not do miracles. They knew him when he was cutting wood. Ah, the carpenter's son. So you have become the evangelist that everybody knows. And Jesus looked at them. I have a lot of love and respect for people. But if you dishonor me and the grace of God upon my life, I will not fight you. But I will never have anything to do around you. Because you will not receive. It's a waste of time. It's the reason why people come to God when the case is over. Because their pride will not let them tap into the body first. It's only when the doctors look at you and say, My, my brother, uh, I'm a Christian, but the way this thing is now, I don't think you'll be up to one month. They'll say, There's no man of God there. I don't even know whether he, he claim he can heal and you drag yourself as if you are coming to somebody you paid money for. Yeah, I heard that you heal. Is it true? Listen, notice that Bartimaeus never called Jesus Jesus. He said, Thou son of David. Didn't he know his name? Are, are you like, is, is this making sense to you? The first night, as a man of God, I came down to Joss. There was a field and people were standing. Reinhard Bonke ministered. By the second day, I said, I must serve this man of God. I can't come and stand like this. I came to receive something. Everybody said the body of Christ. I had seen results, but there were dimensions I needed desperately in my life. So I saw them pushing people on wheelchairs. And then I said, can I help? They said, no, you must be trained. I said, training or no training? I must walk. I must be part of this. I didn't go there as a man of God. I went there as a hungry person ready to receive from the body. As I was wheeling the chairs, I said, this is how it will be in my meetings, oh God. I am honoring the grace that already carries that possibility. One day, this is how people will come and walk out free in my meetings. I stood there for six hours. Behind every glory, there is a story. 
Every great man has a history. It's just that greatness can erode the scars, but it doesn't mean they are not there. Reinhard Bonke preached, permit me to use the word, a very boring message. And if you carry the spirit of revelation, it takes grace to listen to certain sermons. Because I mean, I'm there and, and scriptures are just rolling around my head and this man is just cracking a joke and people are laughing. Like, Does this man know how? I mean, my eyes was fixed. I said, even if his story, story is talking, I want to listen. Listen to this. When he finished preaching, he was about to minister the baptism and then he just took a cup of water and the Lord opened my eyes. And for the first time, I saw the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. I saw a giant bird moving around the entire arena. I didn't even know I was in a vision. My hunger and my honor had touched him. By the time I came back from that encounter, I was back in the stage. Back in the stage, I knew something came upon my life. I said, that's it. I'm sharing with you a few stories to encourage you. The Lord spoke to me a few years ago that he wanted to bring me to a level of grace. And God had helped me. And God gave me an instruction. I got up one morning and I went down to Canaan land. Got the available flight and I went down to Canaan land to go and meet God's servant Bishop Ray. And the rest is history. I went there, packaged the seed, went to just bless and honor him. And immediately I did. I came out. I was going to enter the car to see if I could make it back or at least rest in Lagos before I returned. And then the Holy Spirit asked me to come out. And he said I should kneel on the ground. Right there on the ground. I placed two of my hands. And he said from today you have entered the overflow anointing. This man you see standing before you is a product of many graces. Graces are like addresses. You can know where they came from. Towards the end of last year, I went to minister at a Foursquare conference. Amazing ministry. I always go to minister at their conference. And they kept me in MFM prayer ground. I said, thank you, Jesus. That was where they lodged me. So I waited for all the protocol because they won't allow me to go and pray. You know, man of God protocol. I said, finish and go and leave me. As soon as they finished, I woke up in the night and I entered the ground, the prayer ground. I said, Lord, the grace that can give a man territory like this, there has to be a grace. I can go there as Apostle Joshua Selman, who the nations are clapping for, and live in my arrogance and pride. But I went there, I said, Lord, there has to be a way. I lay down there and cried my life and prayed my heart. I said, something was called upon my life. There is almost no major campground in this nation that I've not been to. There is nobody that is perfect, but in the midst of the lampstands. Please listen to me very carefully. I saw a level of excellence in House on the Rock that I greatly desire because my background did not train me to be that flawless and excellent. I saw that grace and I knew that when you are not excellent, you look suspicious. It's, it's a revelation that I got. I, I already know the extreme levels of the demonstration of the spirit in my life. And I know that if I look like a herbalist, I will pay for it. So I needed to tap into a grace, not a counsel. I've ministered in many House on the Rock churches and I've discerned the grace for excellence that they carry. And I opened my heart to receive that grace and he's speaking. Which grace have you ignored? Men of God, we come on stage and we vent our insecurities. The fear of losing members will cause us to create theologies that stop people from accessing the diverse supplies resident within the body. We turn our insecurities into messages and we continue to teach them. God is speaking to us. We are killing people. God is speaking to us. We are leaving people poor. Now, that does not mean as a shepherd 
you do not have, you have a spiritual responsibility over your people. No true shepherd will allow the people to be careless. You will define the boundaries of their feeding and help them to grow well. But at the same time, it must be a conscious revelation in anyone that the greatest of us is only an effective part. I didn't come to this city to intimidate the men of God and to say, oh, a great apostle has landed in town. All you pastors who are not serious, I will be stupid to do that. There are men and women who continue to labor for the kingdom in this city. Your pastor being a chief among them. I have come to support the hands of the church. To say together like an unbeatable army, we can introduce lights to this city and quench darkness. I was in Yola for a conference and then the uh, press people were ready to interview me. They were so happy because they had listened to my message. And they came in, you know, and they were saying all kinds of things. And one of them was insinuating, you know, he was giving a statement like, ah, you just came into Yola. All this nonsense they have been teaching in Yola. Thank God you have arrived. You will teach us what, you know, that kind of thing. And I stopped him immediately. I said, no, this is not why I came. I did not come to intimidate any man of God and destroy any man's work. I did not come to prove superiority because all I am and all I have is a product of God's grace. I have come by the privilege and the mercy of God to be a support to the church. No man of God will fight you when you maintain this disposition. Is God speaking to us? For this cause, many are weak. For this cause, many are sick. As I minister to people every day, many times I ask myself, what would have been if these people did not meet me? Do you know that when Saul, pastor, lost his donkey, we're about to pray. Saul, the son of Kish, lost his donkey. They looked for it for three days. Everybody say delay. Say it again, delay. They looked for it and for three days they never found it. They would have gone back and said, How can they lie, Sharia? No, when donkeys are missing, they cannot be found. But the servant of Saul said, mm -mm, mm -mm. Just because we can't find it does not mean it cannot be found. He said, There is a man of God. Let's switch to another supply still in the body. A holy man of God. Look at what was a problem for them. Three days of searching for the sheep. The donkey. As soon as they met Samuel, my God. Do you know challenges are relative? Relative to the grace that is at work in your life. There are graces you meet, they will trivialize 10 years challenges to look like child's play. Not every mountain is everybody's mountain. Don't generalize it. As hard as finance is, there are people that have been given, they are gatekeepers of that realm. An encounter with them will keep your life poverty forever in your life. But until then, it will remain a mountain that will depress you to death. As soon as they met with Samuel, I can imagine that they said, man of God, Samuel said, no, go up, leave the issue of donkey, that's a little issue. Go up, let me tell you what is in your heart. This is a man, not an angel. As soon as Saul saw Samuel, the donkey started going back home. Look at that. No prayer. As soon as a man meets another man, restoration begins. Oh! We are here to see only Jesus. We are not here to see any man. I know you are right, but you are wrong. Because God minus men will not produce anything. Until there was a man, Israel suffered for 430 years. Not because God was not God, until he found a man. What is then the man of God? Why do we celebrate them? Is he not an ordinary man? Why didn't God show up in your world? Why did God wait until certain personalities showed up? Listen, I, I'm, I'm, I'm creating a healthy culture of, of honor and understanding. But 
pastors has misbehaved and take advantage of the loyalty of people, we pray that God will help them in Jesus' name. But then it does not mean that you see someone honoring your pastor and his wife today and you say, what is there? Is it not this man? I amen God. Please, let's be careful. Men are men except for what is on them. Please listen to me. We're about to pray. The prayer will be a quick walk. This is really the miracle service. Imagine what will happen to your ministry if you add your prophetic plus pastor's excellence. Imagine what will happen to your ministry if you add your prayer plus his revelatory grace. Imagine what will happen to your ministry if you add your teaching grace plus his grace for character and moral excellence. Imagine that your openness now begins to cover up those deficiencies. Then you will produce the Lamb's wife, the bride, equal in length, equal in depth, equal in height. This is why your dear pastor, by the privilege of God's grace, brought me here. Because he discerned a supply of that grace that is able to do something to a person and a city. Let me tell you this. Sometimes I wish I'm not the one carrying the anointing I have so that it will make you see that it's not about me. It's a difficult thing when you carry certain graces because you are easily misunderstood. The way people honor you sometimes can be annoying. What is there about you? I'm a product of many graces. I was going to go to the U.S. from years ago to meet the great evangelist Charles and Francis Hunter. These were great evangelists. The last of the dispensation of the generals still alive. I wanted to go and meet them. Do you know what I wanted to do? To scrub their toilets for two weeks. I wanted to just go and work for them and serve them. My ticket, my hotel, my visa, as an apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ, I was going to work, not to preach with them in a conference. When they died, I cried. I said, God, why didn't you give me a chance? My greatly referred mentor, Dr. Miles Monroe. I was to meet with him a few months. I was in worry for a conference. And that morning, I felt a physical pain on my chest. I knew something had happened. By 5 a.m. that morning, they told me that man had gone to be with the Lord. I cried like a baby in that room. And I said, oh God, you would have given me the opportunity to tell this man how great he influenced my life. When I started out in ministry, I wrote a letter to many Jews and many men of God. I'm not even sure it reached. You know how we are, men of God. Everybody aware, don't have time. Miles Munro got my letter and replied me handwritten. Handwritten. The largest ministry in the Bahamas, an advisor to 17 presidents, a custodian of 46 bestseller books wrote handwritten and encouraged me and told me that he believed in me and that God would use me. It paid my heart. And we will never settle for less. We know there's more that's found in you. And we will never sell Pastor, do you know what happened today? You know, after the service in the morning, Pastor took me to one of his sons, a, a real estate uh, person doing an amazing work. So we went on sightseeing just to look at the place and then so that I speak over it. Do you know there was one man there? He used to be my pastor in Plateau Church. I didn't know. He sent me a text while I was preparing to come. His name is Reverend Ben Nassara. A number of you know him. I didn't know he was part of the, uh, the people there. So after I had prayed and 
I, 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 I'm not sure I could see her. I, I, I don't know. He just sent me a text and said, Apostle, sir, I saw you. You may not remember me, but I'm Re ben, ben Nasser. I told him I'm still a young man. I remember you clearly. God bless you, sir. If I had found you there, I would have come to greet you. That I'm a man of God, what does that change? If he doesn't discern the grace, I give him the blessing of a, a young man. Honor, oh, and he will carry his robe and go. If he discerns the grace more than that, then he receives the addition. Listen, if you receive a prophet as your brother, you will receive a hawk. If you receive a prophet as your colleague, you will receive gist of memories. That's a friend's reward. I was so blessed and honored. I said, oh dear, God bless you, sir. One of my teachers, when I was in secondary school, he came for a meeting sometime last year. He was a copper then. And he came and taught us physics. And he had heard about me and he came to the ministry to receive. So while I was ministering, I spotted him. I was welcoming the first person. I said, ah, how are you, sir? And he was so flattered. I called him out and honored him. I said, my God, I remember you. You know, he was a, a bit embarrassed. And I said, it doesn't matter. You can change the future, but you can't change history. Let me tell you this. I'm about to pray. And if your heart is open in this meeting tonight, within the few minutes that we have, God can shift you into levels and dimensions. It doesn't take time. It takes grace. There are pastors here who are doing amazing things for God. But my dear brothers in the ministry, can we open our heart? Take your mind away from the man. Look at the grace. That you can open up your heart to know that there is more. There is more. There is more. There is more. You may be outside sitting, but I want your heart to be open. We are going to do just three things here. We are going to pray for the sick right now. And then I'm going to speak over our lives. And then we'll do the final impartation. And that will be it. Whatever price you will pay tonight is this. I'm not somebody who came from the US or UK. I'm one among you. I'm a son of the soil. And I know God did it by you. Because there are many of us who would never receive from any, but we have our biases. But God has made it easy for us. Are we ready to pray now? Please rise upon your feet. Thank you, sirs. God bless you, sir. And we will never settle for less. We know there's more that's found in you And we will never settle for life. We know there's more that's found in you And we will never settle We know But you are going to cry and say, Lord, complete me, complete me. There are dimensions that I'm grossly missing. Complete me. Are you praying? Pastors pray. Just pray. something prophetic here please um, 
I would like six pastors that represent different denominations. Please come up here. Make sure that you are recognized by the pastor, please. Let's just do that to honor him quickly, please. Any? Come stand with me here. Pastor, please, may you come? I'd like us to hold hands together as a prophetic sign of speaking the unity of the church over this city. That we may be different in our understanding. I agree. We may be different in the level and the depth of revelations that we have. I agree. Our character levels may differ. I agree. Our levels of anointing may differ. I agree. I may be Catholic, Ebua, Kokin, Anglican, Presbyterian, Pentecostal. It doesn't matter. That the most important thing is the ability to look beyond our differences and see Christ. This is the first assignment tonight. That we have to speak prophetically over the city of Joss. Listen very carefully. Part of the apostolic ministry is to create spiritual order with intelligence. Are we together? Let me tell you this. Equa will never be Koki. Never. Koki will never be Anglican. Anglican will never be Catholic. Catholic will never be House on the Rock. House on the Rock will never be Presbyterian. Presbyterian will never be Baptist. It will not happen. The advocacy that one day the church will become one central denomination is witchcraft. It's a joke. It will never happen. Yet, he is still here. He, while you laugh at the Catholics, he is still there. While you laugh at the Anglican, he is still there. While you mock at Cooking, he is still there. While you laugh at Equa, he is still there. While you laugh at the Baptist, he is still there. While you laugh at the Pentecostals, he's still there. Let me tell you, when you fight the wife of any responsible man, you will hear from him. This man you are fighting is someone's wife. The name of that someone is Christ. The church you are fighting is someone's wife. And let me tell you, the Bible says jealousy is the rage of a man. You will not touch pastor's wife and have him just smile at you. God has used this man of God apostolically to speak to the church on the plateau that it is time. Let me tell you this. I want to advise every elderly person here and I'm speaking prophetically to all the pastors. Remember one day we are going to die. Do not leave a cause in the city while you go. A cause of hatred. A cause of backbiting. Because every church you see here has come to stay. The land is not anybody's personal property. The earth is the Lord's. Everyone pray for the church. From Reverend Akila, representing the house of the rock, right to this place. Mention the name of every church you know in this city. And say, Lord, your body will stand in joss. Are you praying? I may not speak in tongues like the Pentecostal. But that disparity is not enough reason to fight. It's not enough reason to curse. It's not enough reason to create seditions. I may not be a Baptist. But that's not enough reason to insult the dear servants of God laboring for the kingdom. I may not be cooking, but it's not enough reason to insult the dear fathers and mothers that labor in the spirit. Come on, Josh, are you praying? Lord, we decree and declare that we will never allow anyone to divide us again. We will never allow anyone to divide us again. Never allow anyone to divide us again. The voice of prejudice, the voice of hatred, the voice of wickedness. Regardless our differences, regardless our levels of revelation, regardless our levels of encounter, there are things to change in every church. I agree. 
There are character issues to solve. I agree. There are spiritual issues to solve. I agree. There are leadership issues to solve. I agree. Hallelujah. Listen to me. Listen to me. This is the key. Hold on, sir. This is the key to driving away the plague of terrorism and death. The government can only do their best. But for as long as there is an edge broken, the serpent will keep striking. And let me tell you, don't think because your church has not yet been born, it will not happen. Don't be like Esther who was in the palace and was watching her man plot against God's people. Mordecai told her and said, if you don't do anything about it, when they finish us, they will come to you. Listen to me. The church does not need to agree to respect one another. You don't have to agree with a man to respect him. We respect Boko Haram, although we don't believe their philosophy. That a priest can hug a pastor somewhere. That a pastor and a reverend can see an old Ekwa or Kokin Baba and humble himself to say, God bless you, sir. Although I'm on my way to a conference, but I honor you, sir. You are a father in the land. And don't stand as a young man and speak stupidly and arrogantly. You see a father of faith who has labored before you were born. And carry your revelation and insult the man. And just make it look like he's nonsense. Young people, let's be careful. This advocacy of using revelation and a spiritual advantage to fight and insult parents will cost us. Because although Samuel would be better than Eli, he still needed Eli. It was Eli that told him that the man speaking was God. Are we together? I'm going to give Reverend Akila the mic and he's going to pray over the body of Christ while I, I hold hands there. I hope our time is not being wasted tonight. Let me tell you this. What we are doing, our children and our children's children will thank God for it. What we are doing here is not just house on the rock. Something prophetic is happening on the plateau. You will see it shift in government. You will see it shift in our economy. Are we together now? Please agree with Pastor wholeheartedly while he prays. Take, take away any biases or any prejudice you have about any man of God or any sect. Or leave judgment to God. Yours is to open up your heart sincerely and pray that the church be one. Pastor Sam. In Jesus' name. Here we are, Lord, in your presence. We have heard your word. We have received instruction. The one prayer you prayed was that they might be one, even as you and the Father are one. We pray today Take away from us the little foxes that spoil the vine. The little disagreements that separate us from one another. The mindsets that have distanced us from each other. We stand here before you representing every, every altar upon which your name is mentioned. That beginning from this hour, you begin a spiritual surgery to remove the little foxes, the little misgivings, the mindsets that sets us apart from each other. Father, we ask you for the error of the past, forgive us. But concerning the future that awaits us, open our eyes. Let the eyes of our understanding be enlightened. Give us light that transcends our denominational beliefs. That we might see the body as one. That when the body rises, we all rise. When one fails, we all fail. Father, may this word 
re resonate in the heart and the fabric of every altar in this land from this day in the name of Jesus. Such things that have plagued our lives will receive your healing today in the name of Jesus. That we shall see the success of the body of Christ, not just our personal success. That ultimately, you said a three-fourth cord is not easily broken. May we be united from this day forward that together we will take and advance your kingdom on the earth particularly on this land. This is our prayer. This is our resolve. This is our commitment in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And I speak prophetically that any man of God that comes into this city to divide the church, we speak that the spiritual gates of this city be closed over them and close over the ideologies. Any man that comes into this city to destroy another man's work, provided they stand in the name of the Lord, then we decree and declare that they are far from this city. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now we're ready to pray for the sick. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you, sirs. I'm like a woman who just gave birth. You know how a woman feels when she just gave birth? It's a burden of the spirit. What God has done tonight, it will, it will reorient our philosophies. And you will be surprised. Please, pastors, after the service, do well to all one another, whether you know them or not. I love you. We fought last week. Now I've grown. I know better. I stopped my members from listening to you. He was just insecurities. My background is not the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Hallelujah. And develop mutual respect one for another. Honor is only worthwhile when it is mutual. You don't need to tell people you are greater than them. They are not blind. Everybody knows who is who. So you don't have to drum it on people's heads. If you have to convince people to respect you, it's a sign that something is wrong. It should be obvious. Are we ready to pray? Father, every challenge in my life is about to leave and it must leave now. Please lift your voice and pray. 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 Please pray. We're about to pray for the sick now. Those outside pray. We're together. Here at House on the Rock, God is about to work wonders in our lives.
61 says the spirit of the Lord is upon me he says he hath anointed me to preach glad tidings to the meek to bind up the broken hearted to set the captives free to declare the acceptable year of God and the day of vengeance of our God he says to comfort those that mourn in Zion to give them beauty for ashes the garment of praise for a spirit of heaviness that they might be called oaks of righteousness the planting of the Lord that he might be glorified that every stranger that followed you to this conference it's time for them to go I'm ready to pray for you now I'm seeing chains the Lord is opening my eyes and I'm seeing chains and I want to pray right now that one prayer and then I'll pray for the sick will be done shortly. Please, whatever you have to do tonight, receive. This is a visitation on the land. At the count of three, I want you to shout the name Jesus. The Bible says, now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, it says there is liberty, 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 emancipation from all kinds and all sorts of the activities of darkness for this purpose he said was the son of man made manifest that he may destroy annihilate liquidate the works of the evil one right now in the name that is above all names i decree and declare to principalities and powers and forces operations of darkness that roam around the heavenlies tying the lives and the destinies of men down I come as the voice of one sent and I declare that at the count of three let the fire from heaven bring deliverance right now I will want you to shout that name Jesus that is above every name at the top of your voice and I'd like you to bring all the people under the anointing here they have to be delivered in the name of Jesus one two three In the name of Jesus, manipulations of hell, activities of witchcraft. Is Jesus no longer Lord over the plateau? Please bring them out. Enough is enough. I decree and declare that every force and every altar that fights the progress of people and families, it comes from that judgment right now. It comes under judgment right now. It comes under judgment right now. I command those forces. Please bring them out. There's a reason why I ask you to bring them out. I want to pray for them. Whether you are an usher or not, just help them inside, outside. In the name of Jesus, I'm still speaking that anyone's destiny here that is under siege, I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit be free now be free now let the gates and the doors be open now 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 Be open now. Every family here that don't seem to move forward, it looks like an invisible force tying your destiny, tying your progress. I come by a rod of a higher priesthood and I declare tonight, be free right now. Be free right now. We give you worship, worship, the highest praise to the King. We give you worship, worship, the highest praise to the King. Muhima ka sujada, Muhima ka sujada, We lift up holy hands, the highest praise to the King. We give you worship. Praise to the King. 
He's taking all disappointments. He's taking all the stress. He's taking all your fears. He's taking all limitations. You are made them yours. I give you worship. My brothers and my sisters, hear me. After this conference, the testimonies that will arise on this city of Joss will amaze you. I tell you this by the Spirit of God. You will hear families after families coming to pastor and say, what happened? My child came for a conference. We were sitting at home, but God was touching us at home. Listen, while you are standing here, stand in faith for your loved ones too. Some of you have sick people in the hospital. It's time to get those people out of that place. Now I declare by the Spirit of God that every force of darkness that has oppressed God's people, the legal access that you have, I command at the count of three, let God's people go. You know my voice as speak as one said. One, two, go, 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 go. Out of them now, out of their destinies, out of their lives, in the name of Jesus. Everything the devil has stolen, I command a restoration for these families. A restoration for these families. A restoration for these families. In the name of Jesus. And I speak prophetically that between now and the end of April, let everything stolen be restored to these families. The causes of delay the yokes of darkness. I arrest it that your academics will not move forward. You go to school and not be able to do anything reasonable. Who shall decree a thing and it shall come to pass when the Lord has not instructed it? Is it not written in your Bible that even the lawful captives shall be delivered, that I will contend with them that contend with you? Listen, I declare that any altar in Plato State holding the destiny of any man in all the local governments represented, I stand by this apostolic and prophetic grace. I cause those altars now. I cause those altars now. there be miracles for you in the name of Jesus for all of us and for those that have come out here separated by the spirit himself you will return back into a an episode of breakthroughs in the name of Jesus Christ when you go back tell your loved ones you came to house on the rock and that Jesus is still alive on the plateau listen do you know what God is doing in Plateau tonight? God is using Plateau State to answer the devil that I am still alive for. In spite of what has happened, I am still the God of the Plateau. The sacrifice of the fathers will not be in vain. May the Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Those who can return back, please return to your seat. I want to pray for the sick now. If there is any part of your body you are trusting the Lord for, please lay your hand right there, inside, outside, online, everywhere. Lay your hands. I want to pray now. If you have never seen a miracle in your life, prepare to watch one now because Jesus is still alive. Please lay your hands quickly. Let's conserve time. Mighty God. Mighty God. If it's a part of your body you cannot touch, just make contact with your chest. Please stand for your loved ones. Stand for your loved ones. Stand for your loved ones. Some of them are in deathbeds. They are not here. 
Stand for your loved ones. There is a grace for this. I want to rebuke those devils right now. Now watch this. This is what will happen. I am going to pray and minister the healing power of Jesus. And very quickly, inside and outside, um, maybe one of the other pastors can be here to join Jaffa. As soon as I pray for you, and the power of God, I'm going to pray. When I ask you to check yourself, you will see some of you are already healed. As you check yourself, you will find out there is a miracle. I want you to run out there. Uh, how do we do it? Okay, maybe here or somewhere here. We can just check them and we'll take a few testimonies and then I do the final impartation and we're there. Please, don't sit down asking, can God heal me? That's not the question. The spirit of faith, there is the gift of faith and the workings of miracles in this place. Hallelujah. Are you ready now? I want to pray for you. A lady is going to shout under the anointing to the hearing of everyone. The moment that happens, the healing power of Jesus will begin to move. Right now. I don't know why it happens, but the spirit of God does this. It's a sign and a wonder. A loud shout to the hearing of everybody. Now I'm ready to pray. Agree with me. In the name of Jesus Christ. Come on, Joss. In the name of Jesus Christ. 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 Every devil of infirmity represented here and represented in any family here, I curse you now by the God of heaven. I curse you now by the God of heaven. The anointing, the healing anointing is touching people. Be healed now. Be healed now. Be healed now. Inside, be healed now. Outside, be healed now. Be healed now. In the name of Jesus Christ. From the crown of your head. My God, my God, I send such an anointing to the soles of your feet. The Lord is healing pile. Pile. In the name of Jesus. Pile is being healed now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing multiple lungs. Multiple breast lungs. The Lord is healing it right now. Someone with migraine headaches, severe pounding migraine is being healed right now. The Lord is healing hepatitis, hepatitis B. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing someone, I don't know if you broke or you cracked your leg, something around your kneecap. The power of God is touching you right now. Lower, lower around your, your lumbar vertebra. There is severe pain. Sometimes you cannot even bend. I declare be healed right now. Peptic ulcer. A number of people with ulcer are being healed right now. I command every blind eyes in this place be open now. Be open now. Every deaf ear here be open now. If you came here with a crutch or you are sitting on a wheelchair, stand up now. Stand up now. If you came with someone on a crutch or on a wheelchair, throw it away and let them stand up now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare, I'm seeing, I'm seeing someone, your rib is like your rib. I don't know what you have, but it's like your rib swells, especially when it is cold. I declare be healed right now. I'm seeing an elderly man who cannot sleep. You almost cannot sleep for two hours. I don't know why that is so, but be healed now. Be healed now. Someone with heart palpitations, sometimes you pass out. You just pass out like this because of your heart condition. The Lord is healing you right now. There's a gentleman here. 
you stop smelling for many years you don't have the ability to smell right now while i'm praying you're going to start smelling perfumes around in the name of jesus christ i'm seeing someone you play football something happened and you fell down and sprained your hand and you've not been able to move it freely in the name of jesus be healed right now be healed right now there's someone who has an unusual mouth order don't be embarrassed it's not like you are dead you're unhygienic and I, I don't know what it is but in the name of jesus the lord is healing you a severe pain around the molar a severe pain around the molar god is healing it right now in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ there is a young lady here you almost cannot go to the toilet i'm seeing you stool blood this looks like or um, um what they call it pile but it's, it's like a, a very advanced case of the pile because i'm seeing you stool blood very painful god is healing you right now heaviness heaviness in the body it looks like you are carrying somebody is leaving you right now in the name of jesus christ i'm seeing a dear sister i don't know what happened to your hip your hip but you have a problem you can't stand straight for long right now the power of god is touching you and setting you free in the name of jesus there is a lady your hair is falling like like a cancer patient but but you don't have cancer but your hair i mean voluminous proportions of your hair continue to fall i declare a miracle for you right now there's somebody here you don't see well especially in the night even while i was preaching you were not seeing me clearly but right now the lord is opening your eyes i'm seeing somebody you have a patient in jack jack Kwano. what they call jack Kwano now it's still jack Kwano. bingham university yes you have a patient in bingham university teaching hospital there's someone lying down, seeing somebody lie down there, and the power of God is touching that person right now. I see a lady, you're having severe pain at your right side here. It looks like symptoms of appendicitis, but I'm seeing fibroid. This is what I'm seeing. And the Lord is setting that person free right now. Help her please. The Lord is setting that person free right now. The Lord is setting that person free right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, you vomit almost everything you eat. This is what I'm saying. You eat and almost a, a major percentage of it is thrown out again. I declare you are healed right now by the power of the Holy Spirit. The Lord is showing me someone every month you must treat typhoid. Typhoid, malaria, type. It doesn't matter how many times you are treated, it will still come. I declare you are healed right now by the power of the Holy Spirit someone's neck I don't know what is swelling around your neck somewhere around here as soon as I pray for you that swelling will disappear right now in the name of Jesus Christ Wow the Lord is showing me an interesting case here you didn't give birth but you are like a lactating mother you understand what I'm saying you, you don't have, how do I explain this now? I'm not a doctor. But you are, you are not, you are bringing up breast milk. But you are not, you don't have a child. I'm seeing that as somebody's condition. The Lord is healing that person right now. The Lord is healing that person right now. Diabetes. Diabetes is being healed right now. In the name of Jesus. I'm seeing someone here. Your father has arthritis, rheumatoid arthritis. You are being healed right now, right now, right now, in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, whether I mention your case or not, I declare be healed right now. Be healed right now. For you and your loved ones, be healed right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please, 
you're going to help me disgrace the devil in a few minutes here. I'm going to ask you to check yourself. You will see the kinds of miracles. Some of you are surprised now. I'll ask you to check yourself. Where are they standing, please? Who is there with them? Now, I'd like all of you to come and file and just queue up here right now. Check yourselves in the name of Jesus. The power of God is touching people. Don't sit back right now. Miracles are happening. Miracles are happening. In the name of Jesus, just is this how you celebrate miracles? I decree and I declare miracles are happening. Check yourself, you find out that the power of God has touched you. Make your way here, please. Let's have someone wave his hands. Look at people coming out. I see what is happening. I see miracles everywhere. Miracles everywhere. I see miracles everywhere. My God. Right now, hey, I see miracles everywhere. can do the announcement they can just exchange but please no matter how long the queue is joining please sit down our elderly ones who we took their seats can you return it back let them sit down let in the name of jesus we want to use the platform of house on the rock to let the devil know that jesus is still lord praise the lord please sit down for a while and let's celebrate what god is doing keep making your way to the front yes please okay she came in with pain she had an injury I hit bone for years. I hit bone. Give her the mic. Give her the mic. How long? No, don't, don't. Just hold it. Okay, talk to us. What's your name? No, no, don't hold the mic. Just talk. I'm Jane. Is the mic working? I'm Jane, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. What happened to you? I'm a sick lad. So the leg is just have to do hip or replacement because one leg is shorter than the other. All right, now, what I happened? experience pain every time when I'm healed. Look at this. Walk, walk, walk on both legs. Walk on both legs. Jump, jump. Look at this. Amazing. One leg shorter than the other. Hallelujah. Yes, please. Please sit down. Yes, please. She came in with intense toothache. Toothache. She was healed instantly. For how long? A week now. A week now. Yes, sir. In the name of Jesus Christ, it never, never returns to you again. Quickly, please. Quickly, please. Quickly. I'm very sharp pain at my molar. What's your from, name, my dear? My name is Diane. Diane, okay. For more than two weeks, no matter how short in boy rice, I won't be able to choose. So I right swallow now, everything. Now completely I feel very okay. okay. It never returns to you again. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, please. Treating sore throat for over a week and doesn't go. But he came here, he's gone. I can show completely right now. Ah! Never returns to you again in the name of Jesus. Quickly, I had a lump remover. You had a lump, yes. And ever since then, hold on. So, how long? No, I had a lump remover. Lump remover, yes. Okay. Last year, and ever since then, I've been having pains in this particular breast. But now I can't. Now it's gone yes, completely. Yes, it never returns again in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, please. Is the mic working? Okay, okay, it's not working. My okay. hands, like, it has been pinning me since three days. I could not even hold it very well. But immediately after he prayed, like, everything went. Completely lift it up and down. Any pain? Any pain? It's gone completely. Thank you, Jesus. Never returns to you again. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, please. Please fix the mic so that they can interchange. Yes. She came in with fibroid, but it disappeared. Fibroid. For how, what's your name? Hold on, please. My name is Edith. Huh? Edith. Uh, tell us about your situation. Okay, it used to be very hard here. And sometimes it's kind of painful. How long? 
it's been a while, like for three years now. Okay. But I just realized. And what happened? It's gone. I placed Press my it. heart there. Press it. Any pain. It's not there. Any pain. No. This is exactly how the Lord is taking away the shame from every family <laughs> presented here. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, please. He came in with severe migraine. He couldn't shout, but now he's healed. Severe All migraine. Stop. What do you do? I'm an engineer, mining engineer. You are an engineer, a mining engineer. The Lord is going to connect you to someone in Lagos. Yeah. He will lift you. Where do you work? I work in like three states, Nasarawa, Bauchi, and Abuja. Okay, go and write it down. The Lord is connecting you with someone in Lagos. And that, that connection will move you in a way that Amen. is surprising. Amen. Amen. In the name of Jesus, let it be so. Yes, please. He has had severe headache for three years, but instantly was healed. Gone completely. God bless you. Don't trivialize these miracles. Listen, a miracle has a message. Remember I told you, it's a reply from God to the devil through men that I am still Lord. She had severe back pain for over a year. She couldn't bend. But bend now. Was... Bend, my dear. Any pain. Any pain, completely gone. In the name of Jesus, it will never, never return. Yes, please. My God, look how many miracles. There are still people coming. Quickly. I've been having severe chest pains for eight months. Chest pain? Yes, I can't talk for long. And right now? Yes, I'm okay. Bring in and out. Gone completely. God bless you. It's gone forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. He was healed of severe back pain. Ah. Did you know that this is Jodika's wife to be? Jodika, you will pay me for being used by God to heal your wife to be. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Tell me, my dear, what was? Praise God. I've been experiencing this back pain, and whatever I do with my right hand, the back begins to pay me. But while I was here, I received, after the man of God said that um, we should shout the name of Jesus, after I shouted the name of Jesus, I it. started feeling like something was just from the back and that that was how completely the in the name of jesus healed now and healed forever by the power of the holy spirit yes please careful yes please she she had this oppression sometimes she feels as if she will go mad as if she will go mad from. where are you from you're from anambra state. anambra state it looks like you will go mad the spirit is still there i curse it now out out of her now in the name of Jesus Christ, never to return again. These are things that have to do with ancestry. You see, you see this, you, you now see. And I'm not looking bad, but this is how, this how you marry a wife and go home. Now where the spirit of the Lord is, there is spirit. This lady is not lying. She actually was supposed to be mad by the end of this year. She will start removing her clothes. Like that. Set her free now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I command that spirit to leave. I set you free and I open up the gates of your destiny. It's gone forever. In Jesus name. Yes please. For the past two weeks. God bless you in Jesus name. He was healed of severe peptic ulcer. Victor, please. Severe peptic ulcer was healed. Go ahead. He was healed of peptic ulcer. Peptic ulcer. Yes, Who is a medical student here? I'm seeing a medical student here that has been having dreams of failing an exam. I'm not saying you are afraid of failing an exam. You are having a real dream. I will pray against the general spirit of fear, but this is because you are the only medical student, not just in your family, like a lineage. You are the first person, a medical student. Who is that person, please? Because I'm seeing that if I don't pray for you, I'm seeing you. This person is like, I don't know if you are in your final year or something close to your final year. I'm seeing you fail a course that will keep you and bring you. You are a fair lady. Yes, that's right. That's the lady. Come. Let's cancel it now. So that the devil will not bring pain to your loved ones. In Jesus' name, be healed. Ah. Go ahead, sir. Is it working? 
Jaffa, you can give him yours while he was. Sir, you gave a word up to someone who was playing football and had football. a problem with one. You are a gentleman. You play football. He got healed as you were praying. He right now, check yourself. You play football professionally or just as a hobby? Just as a hobby. What do you do? I'm seeing you. I'm seeing you. Hold on. I'm seeing you sit down with a drawing board and I'm seeing you drawing structures. What do you do? Architecture. I saw the architecture. A student, you are not yet, you are not a graduate yet. Yes, sir. Where? Which school? University of Joss. University of Joss. Yes, sir. You will be a very great architect in this city. Yes. Yeah. Do you believe it? Yes, sir. Be serious with what you are doing because yes, God will honor you yes, and God will really lift it. May the Lord yes. bless you Amen. and honor you in Jesus' name. I need my word. Please, I, I don't want to go the same way I came. Please give me my word for my life. Where are you coming? I'm from KB State. You're from KB State? Yes, sir. Your family is there? Yes, sir. Let me tell you, my dear, you see things that are not working in your family, there is absolutely nothing that is working. Right now, they are depending on you. Yes, you are sir. the Joseph. They've told you. Yes, sir. Huh? Where's your mother? She's at home. Your mother has told you, please go and read my yes, daughter so yes. that you wipe out tears. Yes. Was I there? No. But I'm seeing a conversation between you and mama. And mama is saying, may my God bless you. I didn't have the privilege to have what you are doing. And now I'm seeing that a problem is coming in your final year. And this is a demonic thing. It's not like this lady is done. This lady loves God and she's serious. When I read, I easily forget. This is what I'm saying. Let me talk to you. Now, you will see a lovely lady like this and think she's lazy. Not everybody is failing because they are lazy. There are people that they know the pains that they are going through. You move mountains. You cause walls to fall with your power. We'll soon round up. You perform miracles. There is nothing that's impossible. And we're standing here only because. My dear, don't cry. Don't cry, huh? Is this okay? Don't cry. Let me tell you, you will be a source of pride to your family. You will not only be a doctor, you will get to the level of consultancy by the spirit of the living God. Father, for the sake of your mercy, there are parents here and I know they can relate to the pain of this person. No parent at home will sit down and invest so much depending on the fact that God will raise their daughters to wipe their tears. You see how wicked the devil is. Father, in the name of Jesus, by your mercy, here at House on the Rock, in the name of Jesus, show this precious lady mercy. We declare that you will excel beyond your imagination. I bless your mind in the name of Jesus. And I pray for you from the depth of my heart. Go and excel. Become the doctor that we'll all be proud of. In the name of Jesus. God bless you. God bless you. Okay. Apostle sir. Yes, sir. Um, he, he's been having serious chest pain. Oh, and you're a doctor, so it makes it easy to... Two months ago, he went to the hospital and they said he had hypotension. That's low blood pressure. That's the other side hypertension, of hypotension. Hypotension? Low, low hypo. Okay, hypotension. Hypotension, yes. yes young That's people low. are hypertensive everywhere. Listen, the challenge that the devil is bringing now, you see a 19-year-old boy talking to himself on the road, just moving around. That's what the devil can do. Hypotension, yes. Hypotension, yes. Blood pressure being low constantly. He's been on medication and with constant pain in his heart. What's the effect of that to his health? He can damage his blood vessels. Completely. Yes. Come, sir. But the Lord has healed him tonight. The Completely. chest pain is gone. In the name of, of Jesus power God Christ. Through him. Complete perfection for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let's take a few strategic ones. There are miracles. Oh, dear. I see my white friend standing there. You received a miracle, sir. <laughs> I see him smiling. <laughs> Blessed be the name of the Lord. Yes. Go ahead. I would like to hear what happened to him. Please permit my bias just to make him feel loved and welcome in our midst. Talk with Dr. 
She had a lump on her breast for over a year now. And for over a year. Dead. And it's gone completely. It's pain. I came with, I can't lie on my chest. I came with the pain. You can't lie on your chest. But it left. And it's gone completely. In the name of Jesus, it will never return to you again. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Apostle, yes. sir, you prayed for her daughter to be Oh, your the beautiful daughter. Yes. With One access. of my Jean. adorable daughters like this. Today was her birthday. Yes, sir. Today yes. was her birthday. Uh, with absence seizure, she said, from the time you prayed for her after service till when she came for service, there was no episode of seizure. And she wanted to give up. I prayed for this lady in the past. Pastor, you, you were there when I prayed for her, her adorable daughter, 10 years today. And I told them to go and celebrate their birthday. And she told me, please stand up, my dear. She told me that her daughter um, would have frequent seizures, whatever that meant. That the lady maybe would just collapse or pass out or something like that. In the name of Jesus, we agree that it will never return back. Your daughter is a proper child and will grow on that wise. In the name of Jesus. God bless you. Yes, please. Okay. Um, sir, he's been having low back pain. Very severe low back pain for How months long? now. Let him talk. Go ahead, sir. <laughs> no, no, no. You don't give him the mic. Just hold it. When you give people mic, most times, uh, they feel motivated. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, it has been for a few weeks now, uh, very severe, but it has actually, uh, I have something I've been struggling with for years, but this uh, time it has been... Right now, what happened to you? Um, it's just... Completely? Like, not completely, but it's... Has it improved? Uh, it's improved. Can I pray for you? Yes, please. You actually also prayed for my wife earlier, about the barrenness. Your wife? Is what? The wife and daughter that was here. I prayed for your wife. Yeah. Eight years. Eight oh, years it was your wife. I see. 
Make sure you do inform us where she is <laughs> so that we come and share with joy. In the name of Jesus, I pray for you. Perfection for your body, perfection for your back. In the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you, sir. Thank you. Yes, please. Oh, there, the mic does. Okay, go ahead. Sorry. Um, she's been healed. She came here with the pains, actually. She's been having migraine, migraine. recurrent for four years. Four years. And she came here with the pains. While you were praying, the pain left completely. Just disappeared. It's gone in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, please, quickly. Anyone, you are here for your testimony too? Just come, just come. Let me, I'm not sure I know what is wrong with her. Hepatitis, she was healed. Hepatitis. Uh, well, she would need to test herself. Hepatitis is something that you have to be verified medically. But I'm sure she's she said all the, the symptoms. symptoms, yes. So you take some time and check yourself. In the name of Jesus, be perfected by the power of the Holy Spirit. Same thing, hepatitis, come. The Lord perfect you in the name of Jesus Christ. And we have, uh, let's see, we have to stop somewhere, please. Okay, um, this child was born with spinal bifida. Oh my God. Yes. What, and, uh, what does he's that been mean? on pampas. What does that mean? It's doctor? a congenital anomaly. Okay. okay. That a child can be born with, and it comes with different complications, um, especially with the lower side of the spinal cord. So okay. he's always on pampas. That means he doesn't have much control over that. While you were praying, uh, the power of God came upon him. He started acting and shouting. So the mother said she believed that God has touched a child. Hmm. How are you? Come, you're my friend. What's your name? Charles. What? Charles. Charles, you love Jesus? Adorable. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, when children run away from you, you need deliverance. Because the Bible said, let the little children come. No, 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 I'm not being sarcastic. When children run away from you, there must be something pungent about your spirit. Father, in the name of Jesus, perfect this our little one. In the name of Jesus Christ. Look at me, my dear. The month of April, God is visiting you financially. This has been your prayer. Even when you sat down there, you were praying that God solve this our financial problem. Is that true? I'm hearing your prayer and God is saying I should tell you what month did I mention now? April. April. This April that we're entering God will visit you. Don't doubt him. Thank you. From tomorrow morning that's true. <laughs> God bless you. That's your sister's birthday. Tell her happy birthday. Go ahead. Two or three people. Severe migraine. She had had it for two years. Severe migraine. She was healed tonight. Oh my dear! In the name of Jesus, it never returns to you again by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let's just have one or two more people, and then we're done. One or two more people, please. If you're coming together, come. Please, quickly, quickly, quickly. Okay, he was healed of back pain. He has had for over three. Years. Back pain. For years now. You love Jesus? Yes, sir. That two bad friends in your life, huh? Very bad friends. But let me tell you, love is a command, but relationship is not. You you can choose your friends. Don't be embarrassed. I don't mean to embarrass you. Are we together? Yes. You think about what I'm saying. You love God, but the fear of losing relationship. There, there's no such thing as we're in the same primary school. Anybody who is not going where you are going, you don't have to hate them, but you can keep them at bay. Are we together? Do not be deceived. The Bible says that bad company can corrupt good morals. Are we together? May the Lord bless you and perfect you in Jesus' name. Okay? This will be the last and then I'll pray for all of you. Oh dear, that lady is pressed but I apologize. Oh dear. This is from the hospital. What's, what's, what's wrong with her? Her intestines are perforated. Ah. Uh, intestines. Are perforated. Yes. She came from where? From the hospital. We have to pick her and bring her. You picked her and brought her? Yes, but she came here because of the exam we talked about, the medical students. You're a medical student? 
School of nursing. Okay, school of nursing. She's been having dreams of failing exams. And now you have perforated intestines. And you have exams coming. And you may not be able to write because you are sick. And I've left several schools because of this thing. You've left several schools because of it. So you go and you fall sick. They will and ask now you're to leave this school. They will then ask me to leave this school. But they are not bad people. They are just being sincere. Don't don't be angry with them. You're her sister? You're a friend. You don't know her. A friend in Christ. You're a good lady. May God, are you married? I would have said, may God give you a good husband. These, these are the kind of godly ladies that I pray that God continues to give people in just. Brothers, you will not marry a wicked woman. Sisters, you will not marry a foolish man. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. That's all right. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. Hold on, please. Hold on. Let's, let's agree we are praying for this dear lady. You can see that this lady has perforated intestines. And if God does not help her, this is almost like a death sentence. For this cause, many are weak. Thank God for the body of Christ and its ability to salvage her. My dear, I speak to you in the name of Jesus that you are healed from the crown of your head and to the soles of your feet. Be perfected right now. And you will finish your program and God will honor you in the name of Jesus. And for you, her friend, may God bless you in Jesus' name. Now for everyone standing, so many people, I know that there are a lot of people online that would have been healed i decree and declare that your healing is permanent yeah. pastor is requesting that after the service it is possible for you to um it is possible you can just wait very briefly and then someone will attend to you and give you an opportunity to just pen down your testimony very quickly so that they can just have it and follow up on you will that be fine praise the lord May the Lord honor you in Jesus' name. I think you can return to your seat. Let's round up. In five minutes or so, we'll be done. Two things will happen now, and I drop the mic. Please, I want you to pay attention. The first thing that will happen is I want to speak and prophesy over our lives. Ezra chapter 6 and verse 14. It's a scripture that God gave me. I always say that this is the most powerful part of the service. As charismatic as everything that happened is, the most powerful part is where a prophetic word comes to bless you. There are two realms and two dimensions, please listen, of the prophetic. There is the revelatory dimension of the prophetic where God specifically gives you words and the goal is to build your faith and to give you guidance but the highest dimension of the prophetic is the creative dimension of the prophetic where you not only inform people about what will happen you make it happen things that have no business happening in the lives of men created by the power of God never forget this scripture please give it to us ezra chapter 6 and verse 14 14 we're reading verse 14. i'd like us to read together in concert as we open up our hearts to receive this prophecy one two read and the elders of the jew builded and they prospered through the prophesying of haggai the prophet and Zechariah the son of Edo, and they built it and finished it according to the commandment of the God of Israel. Just stop there. Please keep the scripture up. The men built, but they prospered through the prophesying of prophets. While they were building, their prosperity was tied to the speakings of the men of God. 
It's one thing to build. It's one thing to prosper. It's one thing to finish. You can build and build in vain. But you can prosper when God speaks upon you. When Jesus was born, the word of God, he was taken to a temple and he made two strange prophets. Simeon lifted him up and spoke and and blessed him and one Anna the prophetess who had been interceding for his arrival for 60 years I believe that this is where God supernaturally intervenes over lives over families I may not have mentioned your case uniquely you may not have been called here and ministered to personally but this is where your faith can receive anything Praise the Lord. You believe that? And then we'll stand and also speak over the city of Joss and command the city of Joss to hear the word of the Lord, even for the new season. Please can we rise? It's a conference by the Spirit of the Lord that you will not remember, you will not forget in a hurry. bring them out in the name of Jesus every dimension of grace that you have seen here especially if you're a man of God dimensions of the spirit I stand by the privilege of the election of grace the calling of God and I declare that those anointings those graces those wells right now I declare, I stretch my hands. Let it begin to fall on you. Receive it right now. Wherever you are, the spirit of prophecy, the grace for the prophetic, superior dimensions, the eyes that see and the ears that hear, the eyes of an eagle, I declare, let it come upon you now. In the name of Jesus Christ, let it come upon you now. I pray that the spirit of revelation access to the mysteries of the kingdom. There are some persons receiving that grace right now. I stir up that fire. I stir up that grace. In the name of Jesus Christ. The healing grace. You have seen the healing power of God here. There are some you have seen it in a measure. But in the name of Jesus and in multiplied dimensions, let there be a supply of that dimension. Help that mama, please. In the name of Jesus Christ, a supply of that dimension. In the name of Jesus. Please help that woman out there. I decree and I declare, I'm still praying for you. that is missing in your life that you have prayed for restoration and it has refused to come in Jesus name I call it back right now the grace for miracles signs wonders superior dimensions of the workings of the spirit both for men and women receive it right now i pray for ladies here the spirit of deborah that spirit of prophetic revival i stretch my hands inside and outside may that grace fall upon you right now may that grace fall upon you right now in the name of jesus christ I pray for every grounded church here. You have done your best to trust God for increase numerically and in impact. In the name of Jesus, we give life to every dead or dying church here now. By the power of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, and the king sent for Joseph and they brought him out of his dungeon. 
there are times that you don't have the influence required to speak at the gates you will need someone already at the gate to advocate for you i call the helpers of your destiny wherever they are i speak to the north the south the east and the west of this nation i call them into your life now project that is ongoing in your life whether a construction project whatever it is and it has lingered it has refused to be completed i release the finishers anointing in the name of jesus christ i'm praying for you can i pray for your finances it is true that there are principles listen there are three dimensions of wealth. The first level of wealth is called transactional wealth. Wealth that happens in exchange for turning your value to products and services and selling them with excellence. The second dimension of wealth is called transformational wealth. Wealth that comes to you by reason of the impact that you make in other lives. The last dimension of wealth is called sovereign wealth. Wealth by the finger of God. For there can be a raven that can come and feed Elijah at Brook Cherith. I stand and I speak to you. In the name of Jesus, the yoke of hardship and financial struggle by the God of heaven, let it be broken right now. Let there be a release of supernatural financial supplies for your comfort and for the advancement of the kingdom in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ now i pray for joss joss hear the word of the lord the spirit that brings bloodshed upon the borders of this city we speak from local government to local government or oh, hear the word of the lord we speak that you arise and judge the perpetrators of evil in the name of jesus christ whether they be foreigners or they be people within the territory, we sanitize this territory by the hand of God. I speak and I declare the spirit of advancement and development upon this city. We attract by the spirit the presence of strategic investors, business persons who will come in the name of Jesus and turn the economy of this city around. In the name of Jesus Christ. We decree and declare that the sons and the daughters of the soil will no longer be jobless. Graduates without jobs. We place you by the spirit to strategic positions around this nation. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for your spiritual life. I don't know what happened to you. Your passion for God gone down prayer life come down right now let there be a resurrection let there be a resurrection of your passion for God the grace for prayer receive it the grace for fasting receive it passion for the word receive it tonight I break every addiction every addiction that plagues your christian experience and continues to mock your christian integrity today you are this way tomorrow you are this way may that power be broken now and i pray for every member of this church house on the rock just you are the donkey that christ climbed upon to minister to this city I declare let it be for you from glory to glory to glory to glory and by the privilege of God's grace I speak over this church everything that is alive grows therefore we speak to the spiritual borders of this ministry according to Ezekiel chapter 47 let there be an expansion in the name of Jesus Christ 
I pray for every man of God represented here and every work and labor of the spirit that they are involved in. Let there be increase. Let there be a consolation to your labor in the spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray by the spirit that the fruits and the testimonies and the results from this conference will speak in this church, in this region, and in this city for a very long time. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Finally, I decree and declare, even by the Spirit of God, and I'm speaking to Joss. Joss, you are like that rejected stone. You are like Nathaniel speaking about Jesus, that can anything good come out of Nazareth? It's a city that suffered so long since the burning down of the main market. It's a blow that the state is, is yet to recover from. But we declare in the name of Jesus, by the power of light, Genesis chapter 1, and God said, let there be light. Therefore, just I declare, light be. Light be. In business, light be. For the students represented here, light be. For the professionals and career people, light be. For our children here, light be. For the ministers of the gospel, light be. For every family represented here, light be. In the name of Jesus Christ. Pastor, thank you so much alongside your dear wife for the opportunity. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord honor you. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, my son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos 